Hey, it's Macro Geek. I uh, finally got my hands on a Retroid Pocket 2. Uh, traded for this one used, and it came with um, Retroid OS and Android 6 on it. And been doing some updates over the last week and a half. Um, first and foremost, uh, let's talk about the hardware. I've, a lot of people have covered this already. My nitpicks, um, I don't like the shiny plastic. I feel like it shows fingerprints and oil and dust really badly. Um, triggers are fine. Sticks fine. I do not like this four-way stick. I feel like it's terrible. They should have just put a D-pad on it. The D-pad's serviceable, a little mushy. Um, I wish these buttons had more throw to them. I feel like they don't go far enough in and they feel very clicky. Uh, maybe some people like that. Uh, speakers are fine. These extra accessory buttons are nice. Um, so hardware wise, it's okay. It's not my favorite, but I can see why some people like it. It does have built-in Wi-Fi. So if you're looking for a classic console player that you can do retro achievements on, that's kind of nice. Um, I just updated this. I updated it when I got it to Android 8.1 and that was fine. And then Lineage OS, there's a community build of it just came out. And so I updated to that and Lineage is nice and snappy and it has this new Repolo launcher that makes it very usable with a D-pad and a thumbstick emulating touch or mouse cursor. And um, I felt like the original OS was not super usable. Um, it felt awkward to always be trying to use a mouse pointer to pull menus down and stuff. Um, so that's cool. But I'll tell you this, Lineage OS is very beta. It's very raw. Um, you know, this is a new thing and they're still hunting for bugs and fixing them. So... If this is your only emulator machine, you probably don't want to go to that yet. Uh, give them a couple months to iron some kinks out of it, and then it'll probably be really good. Um, in my experience, RetroArch runs really well. Most stuff from PlayStation and below. Uh, I'm still fiddling with the SNES. I've had some core issues. I think I've just got the wrong cores loaded. Um, I did update to um, version, I want to say it's version 9 of RetroArch or 9.1. Um, the original build, I think, was eight something. So I'm a little bit bleeding edge on that. And that's, you know, the factory one runs fine, but I was trying to get new features. So a little dodgy. Um, Flycast, I've been using one of the eight megabyte nightly builds. There are some newer builds that are 12 megs, but everyone says the eight meg ones run better. My experience, they seem to run the same. Um, basically, with the lineage update, none of the emulators run any faster. It's all about the UI being more convenient and more responsive. And there's just some nice, like, simple feature things that, that you know, like having the Wi-Fi menu be right here where you can get to it with the D-pad. Um, being able to jump to the, the launcher down here without having to pull something up or go into a touch mode. Um, but the emulators don't run any faster. I'll give you a quick demo using Flycast. Do, 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 do. I'm still seeing a lot of frame rates in the mid to low 20s and a lot of audio stutter and dropouts. And almost every Dreamcast emulator, you're going to have to turn off the DSP to get your frame rate up, and that makes the audio weird. And what I will say is, compared to the 351, this screen being 640 by 480, like Dreamcast looks a lot better. But if it's not playable, eh. I don't know that I care. So, I mean, there's probably... Hey, come on over, have some fun with crazy taxes. There's probably some games that run fine on this, these emulators, but, like, you know, Crazy Taxi is a favorite, and if it doesn't run, it's just a good yardstick I use to test emulators. You can hear the audio break down there for a second. See, this looks much better than it looks on the 351. say low 20s on frame rate which I mean it's playable but you can hear the audio crackling
I played Sonic Adventure 2, and it goes from like 20 frames up to 60 in spots. It really seems to depend how many enemies are on screen and how much music playing. But like here, 23 frames, down to 20 at some of the jumps. Yeah, I can play it, but it's not as enjoyable. And like I said, that new Flycast uh, standalone core on the 351 is pretty great, but it only runs at 320 by like 480, I think. So it's not ideal. So that's that. Whoop. And then N64 performance. I don't like that a lot of the Android emulators start with the overlay on, and you can usually get it turned off, but some of them, like, it wants to default to on, and you're always grasping for straws in a menu to try and override it permanently. So there's some flickering and stutter. I do know the big um, the big screen monitors that you see on some of the maps. Luigi Raceway has one. They don't seem to emulate well in any emulator. There was some stutter. I don't think this emulator has a frame rate counter turned on. But pretty playable. Um, I don't think Ocarina of Time runs very smoothly. Yeah, there's the monitor. You can see it's black. But this is this is pretty nice. Uh, Diddy Kong Racing is sometimes hard to emulate. So, I don't know. It is what it is. Um, given the choice, I think I'd be looking at the 351... M or V right now. Um, I'd like to see some community firmwares come out on the V because the display is really nice on it. Um, this one's nice because the Wi-Fi is built in, but I mean, I can put a dongle on top of my 351 and still do retro achievements and such. Um, if you were buying this one to mainly play like Game Boy and 60 or Game Boy and like SNES, Genesis, maybe arcade emulation, it's probably a great choice for that. Um, if you're wanting it to run N64 and Dreamcast, save your money. Like, none of the handhelds right now do a great job of that. But, you know, here you go. GBA works pretty good. So. I will continue to uh, jot some notes down, and I might make a follow-up video as I explore this a little more and fiddle with settings to see if I can get the emulators running any better. But I think it's really just the limitation of this CPU and the amount of RAM and how the device is built. Um, if they ever made a Retroid Pocket that actually had a full touch screen, that would really probably step things up, but I think they probably learned their lesson with this one, that it wasn't quite baked. Um, so, that's all my thoughts. If you've got questions about it or about Lineage OS and how it's running, um, drop it in the comments and uh, I'll keep putting out stuff as uh, thoughts occur to me. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.